This lesson deals with the proportionality property and some applications. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 51. There are two things that we need to have true before a circuit is linear. We looked at superposition and now the second one is called proportionality. The definition for this is as follows. The response of a circuit is proportional to the response which is causing it acting alone. Let me explain this through the proof. Suppose that we take our last result in the superposition proof on page 47, and let's take each source and multiply it by a scalar. I'll call this a1, a2, through a sub j, and all the way through a sub q. So the value of our current now is different than what we had before. I'll call it i1 hat, and now this is the combination with my sources. If we set all but one source equal to zero, we can find the response due to each source, and we're calling that prime, double prime, and so on. So let's just do that. Let's call this i1 hat prime, and that's due to the first source. So there's this term over here. But these two terms here are the two terms we had for i1 due to the first source. So what we're seeing here is that the output that we're solving for is proportional to the input acting alone, and that's the proportionality factor here, a1. I think we can do that for the second source all the way through the last source. And that's what it means to be proportional. Now we've actually seen some of this already, especially when we had single input systems. The proportionality constant is actually the ratio of output to input. For example, take a look at the voltage divider. The output voltage, we call V2, is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times V sub S when we introduced the voltage divider in the last chapter. If we divide through by V sub S, the ratio of the output to the input is just R2 over R1 plus R2. And that's our proportionality constant. We'll also call this the transfer function in EC202. The proportionality idea can be used to solve certain classes of problems. It's called the unit output method. What we're going to do here is we're going to assume that the output, whether it's a voltage or a current, is just equal to 1. Then we'll apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, current law, and Ohm's law to solve for the input that would produce that output. Since the ratio of any output to any input is k, we can then use the fact that we've made this equal to 1 and that we've solved for what input needs to produce that. Then we can go back to our original problem and solve for the output due to the source that we were given. Let me show you an example. Suppose I have a 5 volt source here and I want to find the voltage out here. And we've got a whole bunch of techniques for doing this, one of which was the mesh equations. Let's take a look at this unit output method. Since my output's a voltage, I'm going to set it equal to 1. And that's what I have right here. Now, in doing circuit problems, I'm hoping that by the end of the course, you can do what I'm doing here, and that's to try to solve a problem without, without writing a lot of equations. In other words, to put a lot of the work right on the schematic itself. This will help you for analysis, but also for thinking about designing things. When I do problems like this, it's hard to tell where I started. So I label where I started and basically where I wound up ending. Here's my first step. Now, knowing that this is one volt or setting it equal to one volt, what input would produce this? And I'll take that ratio and that'll be my value of K. If this is one volt, the current that flows in here is the one volt divided by the 20 ohms or 1 20th of an amp. That current's gonna have to flow into here. That'd be my third step. The voltage across here then would be 10 times 1 20th, or 10 over 20, or a half. If I know the voltage here and know the voltage here, I can find the voltage here. That's my fourth step. So half a volt plus one volt is one and a half. If I divide that by 15 ohms, the current I have then is 1.5 divided by 15. And that current that comes in here then has got to be equal to this current plus this current. Now this is 1 over 20, and this is 1 over 10. I could write this as 2 over 20. Added that to 1 over 20, you get 3 over 20. That's my next step. And then the drop across here would be multiplying that by 10. So that's 30 over 20. So now I have the voltage here. 1.5 volts plus the voltage here, which is 1.5 volts. So I get 3 volts. So the ratio of the output to the input, when the output is 1, is 1 third. Let's go back to the original problem where I had an input of 5 volts. So I can predict now the output in that I know what the proportionality constant is. It's 1 third. One third times the five input now is 1.667. A lot of times making a voltage or a current equal to one makes the analysis a lot simpler. Especially in these kinds of circuits, these are called ladder circuits. It looks a little bit like a ladder on its side, when this would be the rungs. And this process of uh, current summation, voltage summation is just repeated. This is the property of proportionality, 
and some applications.